Hello and welcome back to How to Connect with Humans. This is Series 6, Episode 3. Hello Wayne, how are you? Hello, how are you? I am very good. Good. I am very excited. Me too. Yes. We have somebody that we really love, love, love dearly. She's um, a little bit far away, she's all the way in Israel. And uh, we have Yael Abramson with us. And um, Yael is somebody that became a really good friend in a very short period of time. Yeah. Um, we, we learned to love and respect Yael so much because of her passion and, and her huge heart. Um, she's an amazing through principal practitioner. Uh, so she's gonna say about what she does and, and, and and, and a little bit about herself. And uh, today, this episode is called Love is Love. And one of the things we really wanted to do was to talk about love before anything else, before any definitions, before any titles, before gender, before anything else. It's not something we have seen uh we haven't seen people talk about this mm. around the principles yet and um and and we we wanted to uh explore and talk uh with absolute respect and curiosity really so um welcome yale thank you so much for being here it's such a pleasure how are you well Thank you, that warms my heart and gets me even a little more nervous <laughs> to be here today. Um, but uh, I'm not afraid. There's, there's, uh, I, I really hope that this conversation could be another eye opener for me first to, to share and explore how I see myself in the world and in this community. Because um, this, this understanding changed my life in so many ways. And in this way of love and gender, it's still changing my life. Um, not being afraid of who I am keeps showing up like these red lights like okay stop here that's it no more you know this is okay you learned enough now you live your life from here it doesn't stop when when i learned that who i am is okay and the way um i feel that life makes sense to me is a simple way of living is a godly way of living is a human way of living it just becomes more free with not having a lot of thought of what it means to other people and i i feel connected to to a few communities um whether it's, whether it's the community I grew up in, that's a very religious, traditional Jewish community in Jerusalem. I love my childhood friends. I love my siblings and my cousins. Um, even though we, we have very different views of life and sometimes love. And, and, and sometimes I'm surprised when people are just very open and honest with me, and that is beautiful. And there are communities, this, you know, this three principles community that I feel that I'm really blessed to know, to get to know and to get introduced over and over again to people from all over the world. And I feel so connected. And I feel that, um, that life is just so much bigger and simpler than I thought it was. And 
when I think about this title, How to Connect with Humans, the name of this, of this show, that was a thing that I had no idea about. Before I was introduced with a mental diagnosis, before I was, before I knew that I had a, 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 an attraction to one kind of gender that's different than everyone else, I knew that I don't know how to connect with people. And that was so real and so scary that I pushed myself away from it. I didn't want to be too much for people. I didn't want people to feel uncomfortable next to me. But I really didn't want to feel uncomfortable. It was a very big problem in my life. So even though in a very young age, I knew that there's a way or, or, or there's somewhere that I could look at. I wasn't ready to look at that place. I didn't feel safe. I didn't feel like um, there was someone to talk to about these ideas of who am I and um, where do I feel more comfortable and why do I feel so different than seven of my sisters And I was very scared to be a part of the gay community, the LGBT community, because I was working so hard to be comfortable with myself. I couldn't open, I couldn't be open to listen to anyone else's problems over here. I got my own. I got enough problems to deal with everything I have to deal with, you know, family, mentally ill, you know, and this thing, oh, being gay is a piece of cake compared to all the other stuff. But there wasn't, there wasn't love in all that. There wasn't love in, in all that idea of getting to know myself or knowing that there's even a way to know myself. There was so much fear and just trying to figure out it. Walking down the street and having this idea that people are looking at me different because I look different. Um, because I dress differently, because my hair is styled differently. Like, if I was just like everyone else, I wouldn't get these looks, and then I wouldn't feel bad. And what if they knew that when I was young, I looked exactly like these traditional Jewish good girls that went to school and listened to their parents and to their teachers? They didn't know that I looked exactly like them if they would just know that that's how I looked. Maybe they would look at me differently. So I ran away. And I was just trying to make everyone around me comfortable. Thinking that if I just make everyone comfortable, they would be happy. And then I can go be happy. But I didn't know where happy was. I didn't know where love was. And I'm so, so grateful. I feel at, at peace with, with talking about this subject because It's just so much, it's so much simpler than, than we make it. It's, um, I just had a conversation with someone a, a couple hours ago and this sentence came out of me, like, you better say that on the talk, right? Love is not a big fluffy story. It just what is. It's, it's like, if we don't get to decide when we feel what, and we're okay to let go of control and know that there's something that is taking care of us, guiding us all the way, how can we take ourselves out of that equation? 
It just doesn't make sense. And I can think about big teachers, right? And maybe it's wrong. Maybe one day I'll have this insight and then I'll, you know, become something else. And that happened to me. And I got lost. I lost myself. And I went to listen to everyone else, their advice on my life and how I should live. And that's okay. Because I got to learn the biggest, the biggest thing to me in life that when I'm not feeling like myself, I should stop. I should stop listening to anyone. I should stop listening to my best friends. I should stop listening to my parents. I should just stop for one minute and check myself and see where, where am I? Where have I, how far have I gone for myself that I'm feeling this bad and this, and this low? Nothing outside is going to change that. And um, I keep on saying it, but this understanding to me, you know, at that time where I had this big insight about life, I don't even think it was an insight. I think it was like what they call like this enlightenment experience. And that was hidden away because... It just wasn't okay to be me. But at that heart, in that hard time, there was this little pin that kept on poking in my head. You're okay, and you already know more. This is just what's happening now. And taking a step and looking in that direction that only only when I look within and let all the noise out, all the people that care and, and want good things for me, and I start taking those steps that make sense for me, brought me back to this understanding, brought me back to the Three Principles community, brought me back to sharing. And... I just know what I know. And my truth is just my truth. There is a thing, there is something very interesting that happened when I started sharing, you know, on, on, on 3PGC and podcast and I was, I was, I was looking back and, and thinking about why am I sharing my story? Why is it important? And there were a couple of things. The first one is, it's not my story. It's everybody's story. It's everyone's story of trying to, to find themselves, to letting go of worry. Worry that our, 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 you know, our parents will pass on or worry that, you know, someone's children is not going in the right way. Am I doing the right thing? Worry if I, if I just change myself or change the way I, I see life, I'm going to be okay. It's everyone's story. Like, and the other thing is, is that I started seeing a lot of my, my trauma, you know, this word we use on trauma, to me, it became just the opposite of truth. And I can remember in a very young age that I felt, I felt this thing that we call God. I felt that there's something that's much bigger than the way I'm being brought up. 
but I couldn't talk about my truth. But I didn't feel safe. So it, it went somewhere to sit for a while till I could be myself. I think that's all I have to share right now. Um, when you were saying that, I was thinking, you know, those those zoos it, around the world mostly don't exist anymore. Luckily, when you have those animals in, like a lion or a big cat or a big animal in a very small cage or a small uh, enclosure, where what they know is that the passion is to, to, to run free and to be what they are, which is like either predators or, you know, like going around and, and do their thing. Like that's what they, nobody's told them who they should be or, you know, nobody's given them a lot, you're a lion, but now you are, a, you know, a, a lion in the city, okay? <laughs> So, um, and, but what you start to see is that these animals start to develop sort of like um, disturbed psychological patterns because they feel trapped, like the wandering in the cage. Because what they're supposed to love and do and naturally go and feel is being stopped without much reason than some uh, some people decided that it was a good idea to put them somewhere for them to be looked at, seen, whatever, you know, like somebody decided that was a normal thing. Um, so the, the idea of feeling trapped into a concept of what you feel, what you want, what you're passionate about is being shown to you as that's not right and you're supposed to live in this cage. No wonder people start developing um, survival reactions into things that look like mental illness. No wonder that the fact that that passion and love that should be expressed naturally um, is, is starting to eat you alive, sort of thing. Like the fact that you can't be yourself. Um, <laughs> as you were talking, I, I remember um, when, when I started sort of more going out into the world as a teenager and I, I was allowed to do um, acting classes, which was one of my passions, that was my passion at the time. I met two of my um, most important friends in my life. And, um, and then I had a huge crush on one of them. And we're like this, and we're like just going everywhere together and doing things together. And, and soon enough, um, we were like, uh, try makeup. So he would try, he was like, oh, I want to do like a really nice makeup on you. And he had makeup. And then, um, so, and we're exploring, we're both 16 and we're just like exploring things. And he had the most fabulous wardrobe um, of like, amazing dresses and and then I realized he had high heels and stuff I couldn't understand why he had all that stuff but he was so creative an absolute genius and and um so at some point he started showing me how he would do makeup on himself mm. but he would not tell me that he, I don't think he told himself yet that what he was feeling about our things. So we, we used to sort of play together, but our play time for me started to feel that, well, that, this is not something I think I, I can share with other people. 
I think this is there may be a bit of this that is wrong. I don't think other people will get together with a guy and put on makeup and you know high heels and a dress or something. And um, so eventually he got the courage to tell me he had fallen in love with our other friend that was a guy. And uh, though my heart was like crushed, but I, I thought, oh my God, I saw them fell in love. And uh, we were still just about coming out of a, um, of a dictatorship government in Argentina. So being gay was illegal. So they would, they would take you to jail and then they will um, beat people really badly. They will treat them really badly. Also hurt them physically really badly. So hopefully they will change their ways. Um, so this was really hush hush. And at some point I told my mom and she was like, well, you know, still your friend. My mom's really sweet. And she was like, um, nothing's changed. By being a psychologist, she said, well, the only thing is that sort of watch it because being gay is an illness. That's how she was taught, that she, how innocently she was sort of told. Um, and in my head, it was like, how is this? How is this an illness? How is this wrong? Because what I'm seeing is two people beautifully falling in love they're super creative. They're my best friends. They're amazing. And um, so I was so confused. So I ended up being his pretend girlfriend for a long time <laughs> until he was ready to tell his family that luckily then they were very understanding, but only when was I probably two or three years later. In the meantime, I learned to have to, to do the best makeup anybody can do. And then I will say I was going somewhere else to party. I would go see the shows they were putting on because then there was like being gay, but then doing drag was yet another thing, was another step further. And it was illegal. Um, I remember the first time I saw him on stage and till today, he was the most beautiful woman, uh, woman I have ever seen. Legs up to his ears and, you know, and a way of moving. And I haven't seen the feminine in such a, wonderful way and so adored and put in, in, in the most incredible fantastic way and then he will come off stage and be himself as he could so for me it was also the start of understanding of my own sexuality and what I wanted and all I knew was that if I wanted to have children and have a family uh, I better not go that way or explore too much because that would have been forbidden. That was before, obviously, um, gay couples could get married or could even be together, really, or, um, or could have children. Uh, so uh, it was the start of... Today, I wish I didn't have any idea of what I was supposed to want or like. I always felt that I would fall in love with a person regardless of, regardless of. Um, <laughs> so probably this is going to come as a surprise to some people that knew me since I was a, a, a teenager and they thought I had probably a different boyfriend every three months. Um, which were most of them gay, and uh, <laughs> I was presented to the families as the girlfriend. And then I then I would go to the clubs, 
that only the gay people knew that they were gay clubs. And, um, and they would ask, obviously they would ask me if I was or wasn't like, I was supposed to be because I was in the club, but then they knew that some people would go and not be. And so it was confusing. I was like, I'm so intrigued. I'm so curious. Um, and uh, fast forwarding to just what, eight, seven and a half, whatever years ago, after I met Wayne and we were friends for a while and, and I started falling in love with him, I, I thought, gosh, I'm going crazy. I went up to, and talked to um, our dear friend, Joe, crying in desperation, absolutely sobbing. And I said, look, I'm, go I'm going crazy. I'm going crazy. Um, I don't know, this is wrong. I, I, I feel so much love and I don't know what this is. I'm nearly 20 years older than him. He's got a disability and it's my responsibility. It's my responsibility. And my friend that had to go pick up her, her son, but also said, I go pick up your daughter from school. Um, she said, you know what? To stay in front of the computer, I'm gonna put some seed videos and recordings and you just choose and sit here and listen. And then when we come back, I'll, we'll talk. So she came back, I was in a complete state. And she said, well, love is love. You have to trust. Love doesn't care. And what about if you have seen him like the whole man he is? You don't also see that it's as much his decision and his responsibility as yours. So when we say love is love, I guess we are today probably talking more about gender and being accepted for who you are and um but also our story is part of being able to see life through the misunderstanding and see that well when love when love comes to you in that strong way in that when you feel so loving and so also caring about the other people or the other person. Um, why not? Thank you, Vic. I love what you're saying. Mm. For me, there's there's one there's one thing that's been coming up since you've been talking, and even before we we hit record, and it was why have we got to have a community? And for me, it, it's just hit me like why it, it, it for me it doesn't make sense we're all human beings we're all love so why are we i mean i'm not saying we're doing it but why why is it kind of oh we have to have a community for this or we have to have a community for that we're all one person mm. and for me i'm just i'm sitting here thinking you know we are we are love, we're human beings. It doesn't matter whether we're gay, whether we're male, whether we're female, whether we've got disability, whether we haven't. We're still human beings. 
I remember when I was younger, having a disability was kind of like, oh, well, that person's got ability. We'll just, we'll just put them in a corner and leave them. Um, and for me, it was as, as well going to school. When I was younger, I went to a special school for people with disabilities. And then afterwards, leading up to like senior school and things like that, I went to a normal, a normal school, like what I call normal. I went to a, you know, an everyday school. And for me, it was the most amazing thing because I felt like I didn't have to try anymore. I didn't have to try and be somebody who I wasn't. I was just me. So for me, what I loved in what you were saying is that I don't have to, we don't have to conform to any kind of community because we are who we are and we are love. Mm. It doesn't matter what differences we have. Mm. And it, it, it's really hit me. You know, for somebody that, for anybody that's kind of scared to, to come out as being gay or whatever, you know, for them to have to, to, for them to be scared to do anything, it breaks my heart. You know, when I think about that a lot, Am I, am I doing enough? Why, why am I not in the community? Why am I part of some communities in some ways and, and some not? And I feel that first, a community is there to know that there are more people that share the same ways of life or interest in life. It's like, you know, I, I, I do some wood turning. So where would I go if I wanna learn about making a new box? So I go to the wood turning community, right? And if I didn't know that there was a community like that, I would stay on my own and I would develop on my own and I would, you know, I would, probably wouldn't share so much about my wood turning because it's like this thing that only I do. It only makes sense to me. But I think the gift of having a community and what I see that happens from the LGBT community and people opening up to just being themselves gives the courage to everyone else, for everyone else to be themselves because we all have something that we're not comfortable with. And I wasn't comfortable speaking about this because I was so conditioned. I was so okay with who I am. I looked at other people, I'll say, oh, you know, what are your problems? Like, get over it. What, you're gay? So what? I'm also gay, get over it. But I wasn't sensitive. I wasn't seeing that every human being has their experience in life and no one has to see anything in order to be who they are. Like, you're struggling? Okay, that's okay. And it's not only in... I mean, that, that is a big part of it because if someone walks around the street and I hear it a lot and it breaks my heart, you know, a lot of the people in the community, like in Jerusalem, we can't really be ourselves. And the one thing that I would, I would love to introduce this understanding because I used to walk around like that as well. I used to walk around afraid 
when I would see someone that looks a little gay, I would get excited, but I was so afraid to just say hi or talk to them because it's so, it was so scary. But it was like, oh, there's another person that, you know, they look like me. So maybe, you know, it's okay. But I was so afraid because I was always thinking, what other people are thinking about me? And is it okay? And if I go rent an apartment, will the landlord, you know, and I'm grateful that I don't live in that fear. But it is very scary for a lot of people to be who they are. And what if they're gay and religious? And they want to be, they want to stay traditional. And they want to stay in their community. And I have a lot of friends like that. And their parents don't speak to them anymore. Well, they do, but they won't give their children the same gifts they give their straight children. What, what is that about? What is the difference? You know, when we say, oh, your kids, okay, I'll, I'll come to every event, of you, but your, your events are weird because you live with a woman. Like what, how does that make sense? And I was, I was sharing before we started recording, I have a, a niece that's three years old. And when she speaks to me, she speaks to me like I'm a, like I'm a boy. She says, yeah, and then she, she refers to me and I ask her, um, so, so am, I, am I a boy? She says, yeah. I said, why am I a boy? She said, because you have short hair like my brother. And it's so innocent. I don't need to fix her. I don't need to teach her anything. I don't need her to know anything that she doesn't know. One day she'll ask, maybe her mom can tell her, but there is no difference when it comes to to love and what makes sense to a person. And I think that it's a beautiful thing to have a community because then you can share who you are, being comfortable, being yourself, knowing that you're safe, knowing that when struggle comes, you have people that are you know, like-minded in the way that they accept you just for who you are. And it took me a really, really long time to get to where I am today. I was afraid for many years, out and everything. A year ago, I wasn't where I was today still had a lot of judgment on myself and a lot of conditioning, you know, the way I look, the way I hold myself, I should be like this. I should be speaking to people like this. I should be acting in a certain way. I should be acting like how people see me. But I'm a, I'm a very sensitive person. I'm very gentle. I'm actually much more feminine than I look or whatever you want to call it. But that's how I'm comfortable. Embracing my masculine femininity. That's just me. And when I share this with friends, with close friends, I'm surprised to find out how they're all looking for the same thing. Being strong and being sensitive, being caring and still taking care of ourselves and protecting ourselves in any way we can. like to see if anybody wants to ask questions or share something yeah sure 
Yeah. Um, tell us that you can either put your hand up or unmute yourself or write a question if you want to. Hi, Yael. Hi, Claire. Hi, yeah, I'm Claire. Oh, you share beautifully. Honestly, you... I can really tell you're speaking from the heart and it was so beautiful, yeah. Thank you. Um, you know, I think we can all get so caught up with our insecure thinking about ourselves, can't we? And it seems so true. You know, what do they think? Ooh, they're not going to approve it, you know, and all this sort of thing. And I, 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 you know, I do it all the time. Various little things. And sometimes it can be such stupid little things. It's sort of like that fear comes on. But it's all rubbish, isn't it? Because underneath it all, we're all absolutely fine. Um, you know, we've... We've got one life and we should live it how we want to live. Really inspiring. Thank you so much. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. Amen to that. <laughs> yeah. Claire is in the, in the club of cats as well. So I don't know <laughs> how we haven't had here else cats yet. I think they are tearing the apartments apart. But, um, <laughs> but you know, Claire always comes with. Oh, there you go. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Mm -hmm. So all my friends all around the world, it's like now. I just want to. No. It's like I come when I come, and you don't hold me down. That's who I am. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Biggest lesson. I come when I come, I go when I go. <laughs> they rule the roost, don't they? Yeah, they yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mary, you can unmute yourself if you want to. Yeah, hi, hi, this is Mary from Los Angeles. Again, so good to meet uh, all of you today. And truly, I, I, I didn't know, as someone mentioned a, a, a while ago, like, just listen to what you're drawn to. But uh, I really want to thank you. Uh, I, I would love, Yale, oh, if you would uh, just kind of expand a little bit, because you mentioned about, you know, uh, being gay, but also religious. How was that journey for you? And because I'm a Catholic and uh, I wouldn't say I have a lot of exposure as to how our church, you know, uh, uh, see, uh, the, you know, or of course, just drawing from past experience, there was more like a lot of uh, critical way of of uh, looking at the individuals. So I would love for you to maybe share a little bit more about your own journey or how, how did, you know, did you have to move from one community to another in that sense in order to find the place where you eventually feel belong? Um. Today, I, I don't consider myself uh, religious or a part of the community, although I'm very close to my family. And uh, I come from a very, I would say a, a big community, but it's probably very, very small. Um, growing up on Mount Zion in Jerusalem is actually a place that is sacred for all religions. There's, I grew up where the last supper room um, is right in the backyard and there are mosques, um, the Dormition church, you know, 
there is just so much on that mountain where I grew up. And to me, like, okay, it, it, it's not easy because what I would say naturally, I, I would love that if people have questions about what I'm saying, you would ask because um, since in a very young age, I, I saw that like God is much bigger than the religion, but it's a way to get to God. And uh, the way we were taught about Judaism, in my eyes, is not a godly way. And I say it from my experience, I don't want to speak for anyone else's, but I know that in the community, there are a lot of people that, you know, also are very religious today, but it was taught in a way that it was very harsh. And um, there wasn't a lot of listening to people, to human beings. There were rules and you had to go by them because this is what you do. And one of the things in the, in the, in the religious, uh, in, the, in the Jewish tradition is, is the way you're dressed, what modesty is. And, oh, I wish my pajamas grew with me because they were pants. And I had to wake up every morning, wear a skirt and walk outside. And I felt naked. I didn't feel modest. I did not feel like I can be myself. I did not feel like I could climb a tree. I did not feel like I can play with my friends. I couldn't jump rope because it was too revealing. It was not modest for me. It didn't feel right. So when I left, the community when I was about 15, 16, I started leaving the community. I didn't really know where to go. I kind of felt lost because I was never myself. I didn't know that there was a self. And um, eventually I went to live with my grandmother in the United States where she wasn't, she wasn't uh, religious. She lived in Manhattan. I left. I I came from this small community where I had no idea about the world, really. And I moved to the West Village, to Greenwich Village. And I had no idea what's going on around. And I was scared. And it took me a long time to learn about life and how to live. In the beginning, I really hated the community I grew up in. I resented everyone. I resented my parents, the way they raised me. And if I would see a religious person in New York, I would be like, I could just like, I don't know, yell, like, what's wrong with you people? Why do you do this? And it's just when I came across this understanding that I started becoming free and getting back to myself, getting back to love, my family, the community I grew up in, my childhood friends. And today I know that there are many ways to God. And the gift of walking the streets of Jerusalem and seeing Arabs, Jews, Muslims, Christians, people from all over, from all over the world. It's like a little New York here. I 
I really, I really truly feel it's a gift. But there is still a place that I have, I, I really had to become really, really comfortable with myself to dress the way I do, to come to family events like I do. Because I used to think that respecting them came first. And it did for many years, because that's where I was. But today I see that the more I am myself, my family don't worry about me anymore. They are more okay with who they are. And because I'm just so comfortable with who I am, I just show up as me. And people in the family know, yeah, there's a Yael there. She dresses differently. She looks differently. She may even say something sometimes that will, you know, get you like, you know, to think or just... But that's what's special about our family. Not everyone's religious. But even all the, my siblings that are religious, they're not all the, in the same way. They're all unique in their way. And it's so beautiful to see. So I don't know if I answered your question. But um, yeah, I know it's really it really touches my heart to just realizing the way you just express express that it came through to me is that true true self that that love and seeing the beauty around you and yeah. I think, you know, even after knowing, I mean, my understanding as I get deeper into my understanding too, is not so much as a religion versus really that, that spirituality, that, that, that God within. Yeah. So I just, I just got this most wonderful feeling after your share. So I want to thank you. Thank you. Oh, Mary, that's beautiful, and um, um, what an amazing question, really. Yeah. Amazing question. Because my feeling is that this is one of the reasons why I've been around the principles probably now close to nine or ten years, and I it may be my misunderstanding, but so far I haven't really heard a lot about the people talking about this and um and 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 the interesting thing is that uh we welcome people with all sorts of backgrounds and and that have you know we we are what we consider a family the whole beyond recovery people we just i never i don't think i ever asked Omar or, or, or Derek or whatever, what they do to be in prison. I don't care. I love who they are and I love they're coming from a loving place and that they've seen something. And the same with so many other things. Now, our feeling has been that somehow talking about um, uh, the gay community or, or you know, same gender, the, the trans, whatever it was about this part of things, was a little bit like, well, we're so not there yet, and we're going to mm. brush it to the side, and like, I, I, I don't know, I don't know, because uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, but I guess if talking about it, or or expressing what you want and what you feel is going to push you away from belonging to your family, your community, your friends, and you're going to become some sort of um, shame because 
I guess in your case, you wouldn't have been relation in a way, maybe a little bit, but it's more like if you wanted to say you love the man, you would have been. I, th I, th I think, yeah, if I was to kind of knowing what my family are like, it would have been, it would have been that, and plus having a disability, it, yeah. it would, it, it's just, yeah, I mean, you know, me and my mum didn't have the greatest relationship and we still don't in a sense, but for me, I feel that the relationship that I, or that I had with her or the lack of relationship was down to my disability. So for me to turn around and say, oh, I like this person or I like that person, she has judgments on that as well. So, yeah, I guess it's like if you are trying to fit in in a way, and then for people, for example, for somebody who has a disability or has another thing that they already go like, well, it's hard enough. Mm. And then now on top of that, I decided to go against what is supposed to be normal. <laughs> Um, but my impression is that we're all growing, we're all learning, yeah. we're all seeing every day new things, and um, I I should learn to be understanding with the people that were horrible to the black players at the at, at the football cup football European. I find it difficult to embrace them with love and I can see their misunderstanding of thinking that there's something different about somebody else or they can blame it on the race or I don't know what they're thinking but when I say that's a, that, that's a grey area for me mm. I see that or if I see somebody who hurts children or that for me would be a very um I, I don't want any religion or any belief that makes me think that some people are not welcome to my house to my table to my group i, I don't want people that's going to come and harm anybody like they will have to wait until they're willing not to harm anybody I'm, I'm happy to listen to people that we don't share the same ideas. That's my religion. <laughs> um, I don't know, Steve, are you? Oh, yes, you're muted. Hi, Steve. Hi. Hello. So I've been very touched. I, I hear so much of my story in Ya'il's. Um, I think it was really interesting when, when Wayne was talking about community. And I think as someone who identifies as a gay male, you find yourself in a community that you kind of was just pushed into. And society defines that community. So you're kind of governed outside in by the whole world is what it kind of looks like. Um, and I know for myself, I, I was brought up Catholic, Roman Catholic. And the first thing you're told is you're a sinner. And you're chasing yourself all the time to be more at one with God. And the same as Yael, I saw at the age of um, 10 or 11, that the Jesus I saw on the cross was bigger than the man who was telling me who he was. And that didn't make sense to me, but I knew there was a feeling so clear that that's an indescribable love. But I knew it to be truth. So I would go every week to kind of hear more of that feeling, thinking that I had to be in the religion that was telling me I was a sinner, 
And then when I was beginning to identify as being, or I didn't even know I was a gay male. I just knew that somehow I was different. I've kind of, that title has been given to me because I'm attracted or I was attracted to a certain similar sex. And but one of the things that I really saw um, is when I chased my tail, that the harder I tried to be a really good boy to get people to like me, knowing that I was different, the even further away from myself, I went. So that feeling of love and wow, this is wonderful. I went even further away from that, trying to be the, this good little boy. And I still, as an adult male, did that. And I still live in there again, see that little part. Tony and I has just moved. Now we've been together 18 years and we've just moved to a beautiful place in the Norfolk Broads and we're, we're on farmland. And there's only three other houses around us. But we both had this really, oh my God, what happens if any of them's homophobic? And it's like, gee, I'm coming up for 57 years of age and I'm still worried of the homophobia. It's out there. In the United Kingdom, our government still says it's okay for gay conversion. Imagine me at that age, but me at this age, yeah, anybody else from those communities that they find themselves in, you're taught how to love. But what hit me when Wayne was saying about community was like, what if community, what if we are our own community? And we get to know our self as our community because the, the only person or the only energy of love that's been with us 365 days of the year and every year of our life is here. We are that love that we've been looking for. And once we find that unity in that community, there's love. And we define that. And sometimes it will be up here but when you know that feeling of where to orientate yourself from or where you choose, that's where I loved at the beginning, Carolina, that you were saying, it almost like, I don't meet you and say, hi, I'm Steve, a gay man. <laughs> I just show up. What you give to me is what I used to think, oh my God, they looked at me a funny way. Oh, she doesn't like me. What do I have to do to really get her to like me? There's innocence in that that I see. Because if you're, if you're wanting, regardless of who you are, if you're not coming from a place of love, then you're count coming from a made up reality. And you know, when you were saying about the footballers, what also hit me was that one of the things that I've started doing is not to look at how how do I get myself to love them? What do I need to do in my community? Those, that thinking takes me away from love. So I want to understand that part. It's stopping me from being the full expression of love. It looks like it's those people who are doing those things out there. But if I really look at, I want to see that through. I don't know how to see that through love but I know my feeling of love and it's my best teacher. Then we lose the titles of identity and then we just look at, okay, that person's got lost. Cause I know what it's like to be a lost person. And I know the thinking I can have when I'm a lost person. And the wonderful thing about it is, is that, <laughs> you know, like a couple of days ago, myself saying this, but it's like, I know, I know when I get lost, I know that there is a bigger, beautiful, more enriched part of me that knows how to orientate me in a way that Steve struggles in his identity. So in my identity, I'm told I belong here, I do this and I do that. And that's the game of life. 
And we all innocently do that. We've all done that game of life. And here's the program. We always will. Why we're in this physicalness or this misunderstanding of the role of thought or the illusionary nature of reality, we're always going to play those games. But we are our own community. And we get to see who shows up in our thinking each day, which part we believe, which part we don't. Oh my God, is that from the past? So there's no coincidence when you listen to people where you kind of reason it. And one of the things like, um, and I think Claire had said it, which was so beautiful about Yale when she talks, she's not talking from her personality. You can really tell when someone's seen beyond to their community. So when she shares, it's like, oh, I want to be in her community. Oh my God, do I have to go and live in Israel? Do I have to? <laughs> no. When you feel, not that I'm against that, I'd love to, but it's like, no, when you feel someone else's love, that's you waking up. There's your community saying hi to someone else's. And there's not any words. So I don't have to say, well, actually, she's a woman, I'm a gay male, what have we got? In no, there's just love. So for me, I, I, I yeah, I, I've just loved being reminded because in our innocence of life, we have those moments where we are kind of doing this instead of just flowing with this truth of who we are. So, um, To me, I, I really understand now that word, love is love. I, I feel it a little bit more. I don't know what that means, but I'm perfectly okay with it right now. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Steve. We love you so much. And, um... <laughs> Uh, Steve has been one of our one of our first teachers around the principles and um, <laughs> so he's in our series before and um, you're going to hear this first because nobody else knows that Steve is coming back on the, the 8th of September to, to be in the series again so um, we are very, very pleased and we just cooked it up in the past well, yesterday or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and we, we did kind of talk before about doing something because you've obviously met Tony. Um, and, and, it, and it's something for me, and I hope you guys are okay with me saying this. If not, then um, I give you permission freely to delete it. But because this is my passion and because what you were saying within the community, I was asked um, three months ago, um, to be guest on a, a podcast um, and it's about relationships so then it's and it was just so if you're in a relationship then you can talk about that so I wrote back to say yeah I've been with, with my partner Tony for um, coming up 18 years and I was so shocked when it came back that please would you speak about that that I had to reread it again I've been knocking on doors for years saying, come on, not just me, could be anyone out there, but I'm not the only gay person sat in there. And I know it's not about that I have to see a gay person up there because my greatest teachers have been women and some men who I understand to be heterosexual. So I'm not defining it that I needed to, to see but I know there is something about actually when you, you know the expression, your kin. So it's like when you have your kin standing there. So for me, hearing Yael speak, it's like, wow, I so wish as a 12 year old, I heard someone, I want to be your friend, not wearing makeup. I'm not a makeup kind of person, <laughs> but I wish I had a friend like that. But instead I, internalize my whole homophobia because I couldn't express freely in that way. So I still see this going on within the outward community. So I'm actually pulling together um, a, a group of, of gay men and, and lesbian women 
to start having conversations, simple conversations that we start sharing. And there's going to be a, a series of that. And they're all principles based. Um, and they're going to go out there free to anyone. Because I just think when you just normalize, and there's also a woman that I went to do a program out in India a couple of years ago with Tony. There's an ever delightful woman. And she was speaking about um, her gay son and how it was so wonderful because she didn't realize that we were gay men and how much more. And she's a little firecracker when she gets started. And she's going to speak about her expression um, of being a mum and her son identifies being gay because all community, I mean, love is everything. And I don't know what it's like for my mum. My mum's not in this form anymore. So I can't go to her and say, oh, what was it like to you? I know she saw me struggling. I think that innate, who well, you'll know that more than me, you're a mum. So I know all those things, but at the end of the day, I made that my problem. So instead of being, looking at um, what is the problem, let's find the solution and whatever that may be. You know, when I first heard Sydney Banks speak, what I really heard when he says, this is the hope for humanity, I heard that deeper and it was, I was back in that church and I was looking at that man on that cross and I was seeing that there was something bigger at play here. I didn't have words for it. And now to this day, ironically, I still don't have words to describe. But in that describing, I want to play. Because I know you're there. I know we're all there. And if we start playing from there and seeing each other from there, there is Sidney Banks' words. This is the hope for humanity, but not just because he said it, but because you feel it and hear it within yourself. So when I bring these webinars together, that's what I really want to get people hearing is, is people's journeys, but also is what you were saying. It's like, well, if we're going to look at love as love, there seems to be... Um, definitions of it and what I love about what you guys are doing here is there is no definition there's love so, yeah okay sorry it's not my not my program not my show <laughs> it's always your show it's always your show like uh, people so loves that <laughs> <laughs> you're always happy for you to talk yeah. and Talk as much as you want. Um, um, ah. Steve, it's just beautiful to listen to you. And I would, I would love. I know that later on, I'll hopefully get to learn more about you and what you do. Yeah, let's stay in touch. Yeah. You know, there's one thing that um, kind of came together after you spoke and something that, that Mary spoke about. Sometimes it can be very um, confusing to understand love in this way, to see God in this way, and then go back to my family. And, you know, God has spoken about in a very different way. But when I let all my thinking go and I'm just there present with my mom that just lives the way makes sense to her and we connect on that level there's no argument there is no um, misunderstanding because my understanding is my understanding and hers is hers and and I just learned to, to listen more and to be okay with the fact that everyone is just wherever they are and that's okay. And I don't, I don't have to teach them. I was, you know, the first years with, with this understanding, it was like, oh my God, I have to teach everyone this understanding. Like wherever I go, it's like, thought consciousness thought you know principles they're like who wants to hear no one wants to hear you 
So when that quiets down and your hands stop flopping, <laughs> you could sit with family or sit with, with, with myself. And I don't have to prove anything to anyone or to myself because it just shows up when we do, when we sit, when we remember, when we're just who we are, those gifts of images of God in, in, in our special way, in my special way. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who, who shared and, you know, to Wayne and Carolina that, you know, you were brave enough to have this conversation because it's so much, it's, su it's such a simple conversation that we make of it. So I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much. It is such a privilege to have you here and such a privilege for those who um, open the path really mm -hmm. um, for others. And what Steve was saying about, you know, um, I, I, I will probably get the expression wrong, but like the keen, some, somebody that's like in the same, somebody that's walked sort of in the same shoes that had a similar journey in that sense. Like if I talk to somebody that has panic attacks and I had panic attacks, uh, speaks in a way of something that you don't need to have panic attacks to have compassion about me, but there's something about being in that place that the person who's been in that place knows. Hmm. There's something about somebody with a, with a disability saying, I am not my disability, that other people can go, oh. Um, that's why our series has as much diversity as we can hmm. of, of many um, when we met Steve and Tony, they were working, they had a charity for the homeless. The love of these two men, just seeing everybody for who they were. You would go into these meetings, you didn't know who was who, like in a way, like you just, you know, there were some people like offering you tea and then, you know, they were like, y -y 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 -y. And like all concepts about oh whoever is homeless should I should be aware of maybe they have their bit I don't know you know what I mean like I whether you would you know we know stories of seed actually mm -hmm. going even cheap sharing of like cheap uh, chipman saying like oh we're going to have lunch and then he says oh no no let's stay here and he sits next to a homeless man and they're like just having a chat. He didn't want to know why why he was homeless or what was wrong with him or like it's like well just somebody that chooses to live in the street let's see what's going on like let's just just have a chat human to human that's what we're doing we we don't need to be brave to talk about humanity we shouldn't need to be brave to express what we want to be or. or what seems to break the mold. Again, Jesus was a man that was trying to convey a different message. They, they put him in a cross for that, right? <laughs> so it was like, okay, I'm not gonna change my mind. So that's, that's my truth, right? So, and, and so many prophets and so many people that have been enlightened and they were like, well, this is my truth. This is what I hear. So, but still is brave to this brave Yale to, for you to have said yes and come here and, and we step into the unknown together and, and we say, I haven't heard the 3P community talk about 
gays and lesbians and trans or whatever, like, you know, whatever you want to call yourself, like, I haven't heard, I want to hear. And um, the other thing that I love about, or so, or Steve was saying, like, also sometimes the community sort of ends up defining people, like you end up being in a community of gay, lesbian, uh, queer uh, and and th they have to keep adding letters to all that and plus 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 so nobody feels so they've been left out but still adds more definitions mm. and um and what what i like about, about like a fluid idea is that well because what i had in my experience as well is that people that bravely as was the expression of coming out of the closet. So they came out and they said, well, I'm gay, right? And now, now they're gay, now they're defined gay. But if down the path, they decide they have feelings for somebody that is not from the same sex, now that's a problem because they're betraying the, the gay community. So how does that work? Now that's a problem because who they were is not like still saying like their personality or who they thought they were defined as a gay person now and all that fight for gay rights so now what right so we're pointed at the beginning of this talk and when we talked with Yael was and with Wayne was well love is love feel free to be whoever you want to be. Whoever you think you are this minute doesn't need to be the same person the next minute. If you think you're a crazy lady with lots of cats, which I think I am sometimes, um, I don't have enough cats yet, but you know, you can't just, the next minute I could be, I could be Yale's friend, I could be whatever I want to be. I could fall in love with whoever I want because that's, that's the power of having this understanding that every minute we are creation. We are creation. In, in form, pure creation. So love, again, I'm going to keep mentioning Steve. Before, before the concept, before who you think you are from your personality. So this is a space that we opened. And yeah, you, you know that we love you dearly. And you know that you're like my sister on the other side of the world. <laughs> And um and, and I love you so much. Um so um let's invite anybody else who wants to come and talk and express themselves and connect with you, connect with any of us, um also connect with Steve. Um to, to feel free, feel free, right? Have we done well? Thank you. So um, where can people find you? Find me? Yes, yes I mean, if, if if they want in to. Jerusalem, I have, I have, I have an email. I have an email address. I do have a, a Facebook thing, but I have an email address. We can put it down. It is yeah. on the description of this, and we'll put it underneath. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, it's also in the Three PGC um, website as uh, one of the professional practitioners. Uh, so you can, you, you can contact her um, and she's wonderful absolutely wonderful and you don't have to be 
anything in particular it's just like have a chat with Yale because she's wonderful um so thank you again and this is not the last time we're having Yale because uh obviously you're part you're part of us <laughs> thank you so much and thank you to everybody thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> and uh we'll see you we'll see you next week and next week uh we're having Chris Noonan and Chris is going to talk about creativity and and um he started doing something that he calls I can't pronounce it soul soul nudging soul I, I can't say it okay it doesn't matter but he gets a pen and he starts it just comes through him and he gets a pen and starts drawing and this is a new thing for him it's been for the past year or so but he's a wonderful photographer as well and he, he plays guitar and he's a wonderful artist and he has a beautiful eye for life um, and for colours uh, and, and so we're going to have him talking about this next week. So it's been a pleasure, thank you so much um, and uh, you have a whole series, we have six series nearly now of uh, 10 episodes each with uh, lots of lovely people sharing on lots of different topics. Yeah, once again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.